with just a single camera, we can get a depth map or an estimate of the depths in our image as well. So in this video here, we're going to take a look at the Midas depth estimation model. So all we have to do is basically just take a single frame, can be a image, can be a video stream, we pass it through the model and then we get depth estimations out. There's tons of different models available out there. This one is very easy to get up and running. We're going to see how you can run it on your own computer and take a look at the results. Some of the newer models, they also have absolute depth estimation. So the Midas model, the relative depth, that means it is relative to the camera. So to say that you have your hand here and you have another hand here, depending on the hand that you have in the front, the values would act like scale because it's just relative to the scene. So it's not absolute. You can do some references. You can get some reference points here and there. Then you can create a pixel to millimeter or like centimeter mapping. So you're basically just using a few references to try to convert it into real world depth values, depending on your scene. But let's just jump straight into the Midas GitHub repository here. We're going to scroll through it. You can see it. You can go ahead and test it out. And then I'll show you in code how we can get it up and running. So they have a different bunch of different versions. Some of the, the newer ones is based on the transform architectures. And they also have some earlier ones, which is convolutional based. But this is pretty much just what we're seeing. This can also run in real time, depending on your hardware. You definitely need a GPU for this one here. And a very cool use case that I've done a lot in the past in previous projects is combine it with the YOLO models. So say that you have people walking around, you want to create an obstacle avoidance or person avoidance algorithm. You can detect the people. You can even take an instant segmentation model, get the full mask of the person. Each pixel you get in the mask is basically just an index in the image. You can take the exact same image, get an, a depth map as well. So you have a corresponding depth map and RGB image. Then you can just index those segmentation masks that you have in the depth map and you can get the depth values to the person walking around. Then you will do the scaling afterwards to get to the real world measurements. But if you have a rather fixed environment, you can still just use the relative depths. So you can see how to set it up here. I'm going to just run it through in a second. We have a full Python script. Everything will be available on the description. You can set up your CUDA environment here or like Conda environment. You just need to get cloned, Python run. They have a Python script. It is just going to load in the frames, pass it through the model, and then get the output as well. You can choose all the different model types here, the small, large, they have some tiny models, some of the larger ones, they won't be able to run real time. But if you go with the smaller ones, you can see you can get up to all the way up to like 60, 70 frames per second, which is more than enough for real time performance. And you can also run it like still real time. If you're using one of the Ultralytics models, you could run this on a GPU and then one of the Ultralytics models on an optimized CPU framework. And you have crazy fast inference speed, both getting your detections and also your depth estimates. So let's just jump straight into it. You can see here all these models, they have some benchmarks. You can take a look at the number of frames per second. And at the bottom, they have some comparisons with the different models. So you can see we get very detailed depth maps. And these are going to be much more detailed compared to like if you're using a stereo camera, you try to do the disparity maps and all of that, the traditional computer vision ways. You get pretty good accuracy there, like down to centimeter accuracy, but you don't get as fine details as in the AI depth estimation models because they basically just look at every single pixel. They don't really care too much about much, much about like occlusions from one camera to another. It is what does it see? Just converts that into relative depth values. So you can read more about it here. You can clone the GitHub repository. There's also Zoe Depth. The Midas model is basically just upgraded called Zoe Depth. There's a model called Depth Anything. Two as well, and then they have different versions, which are pretty cool. So let's just jump straight into my code editor so we can see how we can actually like run it, set up the environment and get the results out. I've already pre-processed a video here. We can see where we have cars driving around and then we want to get the depth values to it. And we have a drone pretty much just zooming out and we can see that the depth values are changing. Also this car here, the sunglasses, we can easily see it's flickering a bit in the background. Some of the newer models, they're better at video, like temporal information when we go frame by frame. This is more like just individual frames, but you can just see the level of details we get here with the sunglasses when she is picking them up. So for example, here we see it's pretty much purple. It becomes lighter and lighter, closer to yellow. So it's basically just a heat map that we have. But for, for example, the car here, let's say that we have instant segmentation, we segment out the car, we can have multiple cars driving around, could also be this one here, then we can see the depth 
the drone is at and then do like collision avoidance. We can combine it with the segmentation model, as I mentioned, like that's a pretty cool use case. So we have a few other images or videos that we're going to pass through it. But let's take a look at the actual code. So first of all, we just import torch. It's based on torch, PyTorch. So we need that for our depth estimation model. And then we have created this Midas class. Everything will be available. So you can just go in, grab it, use it in your own projects and applications and just integrate it with the Autolytics model. So we have a Midas. We do our initialization for a class. So we just set the model Midas. We need a transformation. So we need to pre-process our input before we can pass it into the model. And then as you know, we have the model type that we need to specify as well. So you can just specify any of the models. It's going to run CPU, GPU automatically if it's available in your system. And it's just going to check it here. Then we will load the model. When we initialize it, we call the load model. We have our transformations, either for using the DBT NART model or hybrid. They have different transformations for each of them. So then we take our depth map here. It's basically just going to be a batch of tensors and we have our image. So with towards no grad, we're just running inference now. We don't want to do any training or anything. So this speeds it up a bit. We can run our batches through our Midas model. We will get our prediction out and then we can do our interpolation up to the original image size as well. So it's going to pre-process, do the transformations here, downscale the image. It's going to process it pretty much just as any other AI model out there. And then it's going to interpolate it up again to the original image resolution. So then we have all the same indexes in our input image and our output depth map, and we can do all the indexing or whatever we want to do with our depth map. So now we also need to normalize and colorize our depth map. So that's pretty much just the color map that we get out at the end. OpenCV, they have a lot of color maps directly out of the box that you can use. So you can use different colors. You can also get like red and blue. So the, the, the warmer it is, the closer it is to the object and so on. And here we're just normalizing it. So usually normalize the values between zero and one. And then we can scale it back here again to 255. So just standard unsigned int 8 bit. We can stack the frames side by side comparison. So on the left side, we have the original frame, frame one, and then frame two here on the right side, which is going to be our image and we just do a horizontal stack with NumPy. So we have side by side images. So then we have our main function, which is our infer video. We can also set to zero for the webcam. I'm going to show you that as well. We set the width and also the height of our image, the number of frames per seconds. We're just going to write that out to a video as well. All we have to do is pretty much just, we have the basic functions now. All we have to do, read in our frame from a webcam or our video stream. This can also be done on RTBS Dream, a single image or whatever. It pretty much just processes frame by frame. So do a color conversion from BGR to RGB. We do our transformation for our input batch. We get our depth map. So this is actually what we pass through our model. RGB image, we have our input batch. Get that depth map depth map out. We normalize the depth map, scale it back the values. We colorize it with the color map. And then we just stack our frames. That's everything that we have to do. And then we have a depth estimation model up and running. So what we're going to do here, we're just going to run this car example through and you can run the other ones through as well. And the output path is just gonna be depth with you. So let's open up a terminal. There we go. I'll just have to CD into our depth estimation folder. And then we have all the videos and we also have our Python script. So now we can run Python Midas depth estimation. Should be able to run here. If we run into any dependency issues, we can just pip install it right here. So now it's going to download the model. The first time you run it, it's automatically going to download the model depending on which one you are choosing. So you can use Midas small, hybrid or large. Let's just go with the hybrid, which is in between. First of all, it needs to download 470 megabytes. So this is a rather large model. If you're talking about like the YOLO models, probably 50 to 100 megabytes maximum for the middle models. The small model can run very fast. I'm going to run this on my MacBook CPU, but let's just let it run the model here. Then we're going to run the inference and we can take a look at the results. Now our depth estimation model is done downloading. So I'll just rerun the program here and it's basically just going to load it in directly out of the box. So now we can see starting depth with you inference. We can just hit Q to quit it. We're pretty much just getting 
maybe one or two frames per second here and I'm just running this on my CPU. It'll run significantly faster on the TPU and this is also the hybrid model. So if you run the small one, it's gonna be significantly faster. But we can see it's pretty consistent here frame by frame and we can just swap out the video that we want to use. If we hit Q on the keyboard, it's gonna terminate the program. So what we can do here, we can just swap it out. Let's try with the glasses or even just set the source equal to our zero. So that's gonna use our webcam. You can use USB webcam, you can specify an RTPS stream, everything here, and it will save the video as well. So let's try and run it here. It's gonna run very slow. We can go with the smaller model as well. All you have to do is just comment this one out. There we go. Now it's actually gonna run with my iPhone that's connected with this camera. So now we can see here that we have the computer. And it's doing the depth estimation here. We have the camera, we can see the high level of detail. We can see it's clearly segmented. I have a computer monitor. So we can see that it, you can see the relative depth here is changing depending on what's in the front, but it's very, very accurate. You can see the camera lens here is just about in front of the monitor. And we can also see that in the depth values. So you can hook this up to pretty much anything, any stream out there. You can run depth estimation grab an object detection model, try to do just do the indexes. Usually what you would do, you take the mask, then you can take all the depth values, segment it out, and then take the average of all the depth values inside that mask, and you have a single depth point to that person that you're detecting or any other object. You can use the object detection models out of the box with the code classes, or you can bring your own models as well. Hope you learned on this video here. It's so crazy what we can do with AI and with just a single model, a few lines of code. Check it out, and then I hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.